on, not on YouTube forever. Hi. We are going to start with um, an example of one of these. So, guys, like before, a lot of this is just going to be drawing a picture and using what you just did to, uh, to do a problem. So let me start with just a couple of examples. Um, number one, the words that instill fear in every single one of your parents. Honestly, if you want to start anything with the, like these... These six words are going to like leave, like instill huge amounts of fears, uh, or fear. Two trains leave a state, uh, leave a train station. I used to say that joke to um, incoming freshman parents when we'd have our little math meetings. Um, I'd stalk up and they'd be like really nervous about what I was going to say, and I'd just start saying, two trains leave a station, one going east, the other going west, and I'd see like these beads of sweat appear as like these horror stories of high school word problems start materializing their brains. Um, but this one's not bad. This is actually just going to be a triangle that you have to draw. So two trains leave a station at 10 a.m. Um, traveling on straight tracks. If I can spell the word straight, uh, because they'd have to be. At 120 and 150 kph kilometers per hour. If the angle between them is 118 degrees, how far apart are they at 10.40 a.m.? So this is sort of a little combination of some dimensional analysis along with just a basic sense of two trains and an angle between them. So we're going to sketch this because if there's an angle between the directions that they're going, we just have to assume that here's the station and you have train tracks that are going out at an angle. And that would not be an angle of 118 degrees. This is a horrible picture. Um, this would be an angle of 118 degrees. I'd want to draw an obtuse angle at least to make it somewhat to scale. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I know that this is 120 degrees. A lot of times in these word problems, you're looking to do a side angle side type thing. Um, how do I know it's what? Oh, sorry, it's 118. I, What else are you going to do? What else are you going to need? One's going 120, one's going 150. Um, not the 120 and 150, but how, how long did they actually travel for? 40 minutes. Convert that to hours. Close. 45 would be 3 fourths. It's two-thirds, 40 sixtieths. So I know that they're both going for two-thirds hours. And if I take the two-thirds hours times the 120 kilometers per hour, I'll get how many kilometers the first one went. What? Three divided by that, four, 80? Yep. 80 kilometers. So 80 is going to go here. Then I'm going to take two thirds hours and we're going to multiply it by 150 kilometers per hour. And you get 50 times 2 or 100. So we know this is 100 kilometers. The question is actually looking for the distance between the two trains right here. OK. So we have an issue. I gave you one angle and two sides. This is a side angle, side angle issue. Side angle, side does determine a unique triangle. 
You guys can dig back a year ago and, and kind of figure that. This is not isosceles because they're not the same length. Um, if they was, we could just drop the vertical down and get this. This problem needs a different law. This problem needs what we call the law of cosines. We've been doing the law of sines. The law of cosines we're going to derive in a couple of days. But I'm going to give it to you um, as a law right now. You guys know a variation of the law of cosines. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared is true in a right triangle where C is the longest length. But if I subtract 2AB cosine of angle C, this is now a law that can apply to any sides, whether it's the longest side or shortest side or anything. This is called the law of cosines, and it's a law that we're going to work and derive um, in a couple of days again. You will not have to memorize that law. You need to know the law of sines, but you don't have to memorize the formula or equation for the law of cosines. You need to know it exists. Sometimes we write two other versions of this and just shuffle the letters around. B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of angle B. Can you write down the final version? A squared equals... Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm going to put them in alphabetical order because I'm compulsive. And then the cosine of the angle between them is cosine of angle A. I really only work with one of them, but this occurs when you have a side angle side. It occurs only when you have a side angle side. Um, and because of that, we're actually going to use this and I'm going to pull this out and kind of just draw the triangle a little bit more simply. 80, 100, and 118 degrees between them. What are we missing? What are we actually looking for? Even more, yes, if we wanted to solve the whole thing, the question only wants what? The last side. Yeah, the last side. Let's call that C, little c. And right up above, the one that I'm going to highlight, this is now just a plug and chug. Because A and B are the other sides, and angle C is the angle between them. C equals, I'm going to do a big square root across it, 80 squared plus 100 squared minus 2 times 80 times 100 times the cosine of the angle between them. Then pull out your calculator, yep. which I'm going to do. I will promise I will go back. I can only have one thing on the screen. 80 squared uh, plus 100 squared minus 2 times 80 times 100 times the cosine of the angle between them. Before you press enter, make sure that you are in degrees mode because we have the 118. And you get this. We'll round to the nearest hundredth because, you know, that's what we can do. 154.63. And just instead of doing a complete sentence, let's just put a unit down. Yep. That formula, the law of cosines, is actually the last formula of the school year. Um, and kind of introducing that to you, I want to come back to the law of sines um, because sometimes the law of cosines and the law of sines interplay with each other uh, to fill in all the missing pieces of a single triangle. But before we do that, let's go on to one that's back to a law of sines. So to review the law of sines, and I'm writing this down because it has been a while since we've seen each other. Law of sines is the sine of A over A equals the sine of B over B equals the sine of C over C. The ambiguous case with the law of sines occurs 
whenever you have a triangle that could form in multiple ways, usually when you're solving for a last angle, or any, or, or well, not last angle, when you're solving for an angle that's not there, not given. Um, but on these word problems, there's often just one way it can go. And so we're going to give an example here. A surveyor measures the distance between points A and B on opposite sides of the shore or opposite sides of a river. So whenever you see that, you make a lot of assumptions. You assume that the river runs a very, very straight path that is not deviating, not curving, and not doing anything other than just you have a bank, you have another bank, and you have a lot of agua in between. We'll highlight so I can draw. There's your river. Bird's eye view. Yep, distance between points A and points B on the side of a river. Um, on, sorry, on, it should be different, on opposite. I can't even write and talk at the same time. All right, I'll, I'll slide this over so, because you know, you can do that. So here's B and here's A, and I'm kind of tr sketching this out for you. Um, surveyor would have to just kind of be all over the place, so. Yeah, let's say that A is in a place that the surveyor can't get to, so there's like a lot of crap happening around A and surveyor can't reach it, but surveyor can reach point C and can hang out there. And the surveyor measures that the distance between point C and point A is 200. And then is also able to measure two angles, which is not terribly difficult to do. Angles 84.2 degrees and angle 63.8 degrees. And we're going to label this distance D, wants to find the distance between A and B. So given all of that, I, sometimes just to kind of keep things a little more simple, I tend to pull things out of a figure and redraw the triangle to kind of be away from all the extra stuff and start labeling. Yeah, it's 200. Um, we don't have the other angle. We can figure it out. Yeah, I'm just going to do it on here because I can. And now I don't have to awkwardly like switch away from it. Minus 63.8. It is 32. So now that we have that, um, do I have an opposite side and an opposite angle? Yes. Yeah. The sine of? 63.8. Didn't really need the 32, but it's nice to know. Um, the sine of 84.2 degrees over that side D. You're always looking for opposite angle, opposite sine, or opposite angle, opposite side, not sine. Cross multiply, you get D times the sine of 63.8 degrees equals 200 times the sine of 84.2 degrees, or D is equal to 200 times the sine of 84.2 degrees over the sine of 63.8 degrees. Next, divide. I'll get back there. Why? But well, now you have to read it to me because I like totally just put it off the screen. I can kind of see it down there. 200 times the sine of 84.2 over the sine of 63.8. 221.76. I need to change this calculator to show more decimals, but that's fine for now. 
Uh, units? I didn't give you. See, the problem did. It was 200 meters. Okay, last one, then you guys can work. A weather balloon, which I've actually never seen in real life, but apparently all these problems deal with weather balloons. That's the answer to every UFO. Yep, it was a weather balloon. A weather balloon is hovering above a line joining points A and B. which are 4.6 kilometers apart. So if I'm looking at this from the side, um, I have the ground. I have a weather balloon, which we're going to make green. Mm -hmm. And this is my line joining points A and B. And that is 4.6 kilometers apart. Be impressed if you knew how many miles that is. Uh, is it 0.63 miles per mile? Oh no, if you just knew it. Wait, is that right? 4.6k. Some of you should know how much 5k is, so just kind of. 3.1 miles. That would be right. I like how you did that last round the track. Oh, is it just it's 11.5, actually, because 11 laps would be 440 meters, yeah. or 4,400 meters. 2.89 miles, is that true? That sounds about right. Okay. Um, next, the angle of elevation to the balloons. So remember, angle of elevation is stand, you look out, then you look up. That this person's looking out and then looking up. The angle of elevation to one, we're going to say, is 28.2 degrees, and the angle of elevation to the other is 52.2 degrees. So let's say 20? Yep, 28.2. How would that happen? Are they like in a valley or something? Yeah, it's a word problem. It is. They're very artificial. You kind of just have to go with it. OK. The question is asking you to find the altitude. How high is the balloon? We're going to call that h. So we need a strategy to get h. And doing that, I mean, breaking this up into two triangles might not be the best strategy because we don't know where the split happens at the base. But we should, if I ignore that for a second and just kind of label these sides, uh, let's label them opposite, label those B and label that little A, I should be able to get both of those. And actually, I only need one of them. Let's get both. Which one do you want? Doesn't matter, actually. OK, A. I just heard A. I don't really care. You can do B if you want to. Um, we're going to say the sine of 28.2 degrees over A equals, do you guys have an opposite side and an opposite length? Uh, yeah, I'm talking about what side is. Exactly. We have the missing angle right here that we can find. So that is 180 minus 28.8 minus 52.2. Is that 99? Just checking that I did that right. Yes. Okay. So this would be 99 degrees. And I'm going to go sine of 99 degrees over 4.6. We'll keep the units in kilometers for now. It might make sense to go to meters, but cross multiply, you get A sine of 99 degrees is equal to 4.6 times the sine of 28.2 degrees. Divide, you get A is equal to 4.6 sine of 28.2 divided by sine of 99. And I'm wondering maybe if I just like type it and then show the entry after so I can leave this up for a second and see it. 
be best if I could split screen it, but I don't feel like dealing with that right now. Just not sure, like I don't need to show the little calculator thing on the left. Oh, maybe change the view, no. Okay, in any case, 2.20. Hurts me too. So you get 2.20. Um, I'm going to leave that in the calculator because that gives me what this is. So what I'm going to do now, because the question actually asked for H, it didn't ask for that. Off to the right side here, I'm just going to draw like the right triangle, meaning this triangle right here. I'm going to pull that out of the figure and just put what we know about that. I know that this is 2.20, this is 52.2 degrees, and this is H. And it is very common for you guys to forget that with right triangle trig, the whole thing should be easier. You don't need to use law of sines for right triangle trig. You just need to figure out which ratio relates these three quantities. What's the one that relates H to the radius? Sine. So I know that the sine of 52.2 degrees is equal to H over 2.20 which means h is equal to 2.20 sine of 52.2 degrees. I don't know why. Oh, I put 2.20 because that was what I got from, the, from this. It is. I'm, I'm putting the point 2.20 because I'm reminding myself that I'm actually going to use the calculator stored value on that. So it's kind of a rounding the two decimal places. Remember, 2.20 communicates that it's not 2.21, it's not 2.19, it's like 2.20 rounded. So uh, we get H is equal to 2.20 sine of 52.2. So I'm going to call back this answer. You can actually highlight and grab it, and then it will like grab every decimal place after that times sine of 52.2. And you get 1.739. I feel like I really, really, really want that to have more decimals. Really, really, really do. I'm going to. Well, because I want to be able to change it to meters, just because you don't really talk about how far vertically something is in miles. That's weird. It's not like a unit that people actually use. So we're going to do that again. There's my decimal. And because my H is 1.7, I'm going to put a couple of decimal places down, 38996. I don't need that many. Um, but that's in kilometers. How do you get from kilometers to, to meters? Yeah. So what I would probably say is H is 1738.996 meters. And actually, technically, if I wanted to round that to two decimal places, we would say 1739.00 meters. That would be correct, rounded to two decimal places. You do put the point zero zero because of sig figs. So, okay, we are stopping.